Hi there fellow guitarists, welcome to MBN Guitar. My name is Josh Rogers and in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you the first section to La Paloma by Ida Deer. Uh, remember if you like the video please smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel and there's a new feature with this little like bell and it gives you notifications when I upload. Anyway, let's kick straight into this. Make sure you tune your sixth string down to D. It starts off with a pretty cool technique, which is palm muting. And to get a good palm mute, you just put your palm, or I should say the edge of your palm here, pretty close, or you can even rest it right on the nut down here. And you want to make sure that you can still hear the pitch of the note. You can hear the pitch there. If you go too far forward, you don't hear it, it just sounds like pure percussion. But you'll know if you've got it right, or if you can still hear the actual notes. Alright, let's have a look at what those are. We're just doing three open strings essentially. D, A, D, A, or 6, 5, 4, 5. And they're all open. You do it three times. Now there, on the third time, don't go back to the open A. So it's just, and then you're going to kick in with the melody, which is this. That's a slide from four to seven on the fourth string. And when you get there, hit it again and play open D at the same time, like this. Then we've got open five, open on the A, followed by open D again. Before we carry on, I should mention that when you're interpreting this piece, i.e. playing it, you don't want to put too much emphasis on the bass notes, like, like this, for example. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of exaggerating there, but my point is, if you put too much emphasis on the bass notes, the melody gets lost, and the ear starts thinking, oh, where is this piece going? So make sure you put more emphasis on these melody notes like this. And then play these bass notes a bit quieter. Instead of... And that's the idea you want to keep with you in the back of your head throughout the entire piece. We've got that. Then we've got a shift up to here. So that is 9, 10, 12, all on the A string, and then you play the open A, but this open A doesn't belong to the melody, it actually belongs to the bass, so you don't play that one very loud. Like that. Then the ninth fret on the D, and then you're going to sneak in the open D like this. Immediately by 11 on the D string. Then 12 on the D string. Then 9 11 on the D string. Then open A. Then we're doing a slide from 7 to 5 on the D string like this. So it's quite quick. Then we have which is 0, 4, 7 on the A string. I play it staccato, which means short and detached, like not like that. That's just my interpretation. Like that. Then three natural harmonics at the 7th fret. I'm going from the 6th string to the 5th to the 4th. Then we have this. It's a slide from 2 to 5 on the B string, and just like this, it's the same idea. So when you get there, you're going to hit that note again and open A at the same time. Then 5 on the D, 6 on the G, and back to the D. Followed by open A. Then we have 7 to 7. B to G. Then it's 
open A and 5 on the B together, followed by 6 on the G string. Then we have that's open A and 7th fret on the G together, then 2 pull offs from 9 to 7 to 6 on the G. like this. That's open D and a pull off from 7 to 4 on the D string at the same time. Then that same kind of motif, open 5, open on the A. From here. Then that's uh, Natural harmonics again, but it looks like they could be artificial just because of the way I'm picking it. That's 12, 12, 12, from 6 to 5 to 4. Now you could do it like that, but I kind of like holding onto this note, this uh, F sharp. If I did it like uh, this way. It still sounds cool, but my preference is just to keep that going. Then we have the same kind of idea again. It's basically this. One octave up. Alright, so we're doing a slide from 7 to 10 on the B string. When we arrive at the 10th fret, hit that open D at the same time. Then 7, 7, 7, from D to G, back to G. Then that open D again. You may notice here that I'm barring five strings, and that's because of what's coming up soon. After this open D, we have that's 7, 8 on the B. 7 on the D. Then it's followed by 7 on the G and 10 on the B together. Then 7 and 7 together on the D and E strings. And open D and the uh, ninth fret on the 1st string. Quite a, a nice clash there. It's a, Compound to major seventh. Then to the tenth fret on the first string. Then seven seven like that from the first string to the D string. Then seven on the G and nine on the E together. Seven on the G and ten on the B together. And then we have this, which is kind of tricky actually for me anyway. Uh, we've got seventh on the A, ninth on the D, and a pull off from ten to eight on the B string all at the same time. Then that's from seven to nine to seven D G D. Then open A. 7 on the D, 6 on the G. That bit there. And the same idea. Okay, so that's a slide from 9 to 12 on the first string. When you get to 12, hit it again and play open A at the same time. There we have 11 on the D, and then 12 on the G, and 10 on the B together. This. Then I change, or swap I should say, fingers. I use my first finger to play the 11th on the D again, 
And then I play a natural harmonic on the 12th fret of the A. As you may have noticed already, there's a lot of different techniques involved in this song. It sounds so simple and beautiful when you're listening to it, uh, but actually there's a lot going on. You've got palm muting, artificial harmonics, natural harmonics, natural harmonics that are played like artificial harmonics, slides, pull-offs, hammer-ons, trills. There's so many facets or, and techniques explored in this piece, so it's probably a good idea to make sure you can play all of those techniques before you try tackling this. But anyway, we're here. Then we have the first kind of just melody going on without anything else. Like that. That's all on the first string. 14, 10, 12, 9. Then we have a series of thirds. Like that. Uh, let's just do it without the trills. So we've got open A, 12 on the B, and 10 on the E. Then 10, 9. Then 8, 7. Then 7, 5. Then 5, 3. And then 3, 2. So you can just practice like that. And then when you get to this one, Make sure you hit the open A again. And when you get down there, you play an open D at the same time. Now, when you're doing that, you can put a trill in. Like that. And there again too. So there I'm just hammering onto the 12th and then pulling off again to the 10th. And then there I'm hammering onto the 5 and pulling off to the 3. So I've done that, and then I do some palm muting again. From open A to open D, back to open A. And then harmonics at the 12th fret. 6, 5, Then you repeat all of that, all the way up to here. Then instead of going and back to the start, we're going to do this. Okay, so we're moving into the second section. That's for another tutorial. Thanks for sticking out with me and make sure if you don't know the piece, check out my full playthrough. Or, personally, I think my favourite interpretation of this is by Pepe Romero. He's doing an amazing job of this as an encore piece in a concert that he did in Seoul quite a few years ago. It might have been in the 90s or early 2000s. I'm not quite sure when it was. But that's an amazing, uh, amazing guitar player and well worth watching. You can watch that one and you can also watch my one, which has a, a nice close-up of the way that I do it. Have fun and as you know... Let your fingers fly.